and there's a huge hole just there like you couldn't move to this side or this side try and jump over it was just a hole that went straight down and it was hot really hot and it was really really loud as well i could hear people crying and screaming for help every second they were being tortured my body's on the floor my spirit and soul is coming i went to a place that had a drop off point and these big black gates started opening up all i could see is from what i could see with my eyes and as far as i couldn't see no more it was like an ocean of people screaming and crying and all i could hear is get me out of here please please get me out of here and i find myself in this big big dark place there's fire and there's screaming, there's shouting and people saying that, let me out. Let me out. I, I want to do right. I want to do right this time. I promise to do right. Let me go out and tell the world and let them know that this is a real place. Hell is real. I've seen it. The world needs to know about hell. Everyone needs to know about hell. Giant chamber. We stood above. And we looked down and I saw like an ocean of souls, many, many souls. I said it was just very large, 13 feet tall, and uh, just extremely muscular. And uh, this thing, like I said, it just picked me up like uh, I weighed nothing to it. And uh, it was taking me along for a ride. And, uh, but just the, I only looked at its face for, I would say a second, and that's all that it took. Yeah, I was just, as a man, I'm not afraid of any other man on the face of this earth. I will fight anybody, I don't care how much bigger they are than me, but this thing, there was, there was no fighting it. I mean, it was, it was far too big. I mean. 13 feet tall versus 6 feet tall, I could stack another one of me on top of my head and still not be as tall as it. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being sucked out of your body. And I found myself falling through the air and I landed in this actual prison cell in hell. And uh, there were these demonic creatures in this cell. What were they like? Reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over their bodies. Yeah. Uh, these particular two were about 12 or 13 feet tall. But the one picked me up, threw me into the wall, tremendous strength. I collapsed on the floor. I felt bones broken. Mm -hmm. The other one dug his claws into my chest, tore the flesh open. You have a body in hell, but it can withstand this torment. I was in this big old cavern. Her entire body from head to toe, she had her clothes on and everything. She was covered in fire, fire that could not be put out. Jesus mentioned three times in a row, I believe it was, in the Bible. This... When people talk about hell, hell isn't like this or that. If you had a thousand books of a thousand pages describing hell, it would only touch the surface of all the exquisite torments of hell. You mentioned Dante earlier. But it's but a tiny glimpse of what hell is. You know, people say, well, in your experience, you were in darkness and torment and stuff like that. And I said, yeah, that's an aspect of hell. There's a, there's for every type of alienation from God, for every type of hatred of God, for every type of rejection of God, um, in whatever form that takes, there's a hell wow. for that. I started to fall down in something like a dark, dark pit. And uh, I knew with my spirit uh, that I was falling into the bottomless pit of hell. As my soul left my body, I began traveling faster than the speed of light. And I began falling and falling and falling. And all of a sudden, this explosion happened on the inside of me. It was as if there was like a sulfuric type acid yeah. burn that consumed me in every way. It was so hideous and terrifying. There are no words to describe the level of pain and the type of burn that I was experiencing. What was it? It was hell, Pat. It was the what the Bible describes as hell. It was the fire 
of hell. And I looked and there were people. They were lined up side by side as far as you could see. As far as I could see back and as far as I could see to the left and as far as I could see to the right, they were lined up side by side. And they had their hands up and their mouths open. They were screaming, but I couldn't hear them. They were screaming in terror, but I couldn't hear them, but I could see them. And then I looked, the flames came up to about almost to their waist. But you know how fire goes up, like they say, the fire licks. The, 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 the fire was going up chest high and their skin was melting. But it didn't come off, it bubbled, their skin bubbled. It's like, um, well, you've seen things that bubble. Mm -hmm. Just their skin was bubbling. It was boiling, it was bubbling. But it didn't fall off. And the people were screaming. And so we get into complete darkness. I'm absolutely terrified. Because these people are very hostile, I don't know where I am. I said, I'm not going to go with you any further. They said, um, you're almost there. And we started to fight. I, just, I was trying to get away from them. They were pushing and pulling at me. And um, there are now a lot of them. What originally had been like a handful now was, since it was darkness, made hundreds or thousands. I, don't, I mean, I have no idea. And they're playing with me. You know, clearly they could have just destroyed me if they wanted to. They didn't want to destroy me. What they wanted to do was they wanted to inflict pain on me. And as he was talking to me, it, it appeared like the ambulance literally exploded in flames. I, I thought it had actually blown up. It filled with smoke. And immediately I was moving through that smoke and seeing fire and smoke and and people inside of this burning place screaming and crying. They were burning, but they weren't burning up. They weren't being consumed. And then the sensation of moving downward into this. But, but the most terrible part of it, I began to recognize many of the people that I was seeing in these flames. As if a close-up lens on a camera was bringing their faces close to me, I could I could see their features and see the agony and the pain and the frustration. And a number of them began to call my name and said, Ronnie, don't come to this place. There's no way out. There's no escape. If you come here, there's no way out. Um, it is an experience that, will, that literally changed my life. I have uh, never been the same since then. I will try to keep it as short and brief as possible so this video isn't too long, but it's something I think that everyone needs to know about. Um, on July 20th, 2009, I died from a massive coronary and went straight to hell. Uh, uh, I freaked out. I, I, uh, I had this demon slither around me around my shoulders, real, real reptilious looking, um, tentacle type hair, millions of teeth, got right in my face and said, I got you now. So understand, as I said to you earlier, man is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in a body. The spirit in me that lives eternally in God's image, the inner man came out and instantly I was surrounded by darkness. All around me was darkness, it was pitch black and it was musty. And I remember just being so confused. My body felt the same, everything felt the same. And instantly I began to roll down. I was just going down, 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 down at the speed of like someone had pushed me down a hill. That kind of uncontrollable movement. And as I've rolled, 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 the ground beneath me has opened and I've landed in scorching flames of fire. Beneath me is black flames, red flames, just fire, burning brimstone and flames. And instantly as I've landed in, I've, the first feeling was drowning. I was starting to drown in flames of fire. Suffocation. It meant suffocation on the throat. No ability to breathe at all. Instantly my mind went to the rich man. For the Bible says that there was a rich man who died 
and being tormented in flames, looked up at Lazarus and get me a drop of water for I am tormented by this flame. The rich man is still begging for that drop of water today. A drop of water on earth cannot do you anything, but in hell you are so desperate just for something, for something. In hell it's going to do even less, but you're desperate for something. Instantly in my spirit as I was there, the Lord told me this is not the depths. This is not the depths of hell. I was so grateful to God that I did not experience the full heat of hell, the full scorching fire. Yes, it was extremely hot, hotter than any ever you can experience on earth. A million times hotter than that, but the Lord ministered to me said, this is not the full intensity. This is not the depth. And at, at the very second that I passed out, I was not here on earth anymore. I was in some other place. All of a sudden I see darkness all around me. And I see these eyes all around me, eyes of pure evil. And they're, they're demons and devils and unclean spirits that are laughing at me saying, you're stupid, you were stupid enough to commit suicide. Now we have you, now we own you for the rest of our lives. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to torture you for the rest of your life because of what you've done, you committed suicide. And as I was just thinking about all these things in my head, I saw these demons of different sizes, big ones, like seven feet tall, five feet tall, three feet tall, all around me, laughing at me. There were half humans, half, 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 the half like demons, half like lizards. But at some point in the conversation, dad, my, my, God allowed my dad to come up from hell. Uh, I saw my dad, I'm, I'm looking out of the, the window of the truck, it's at night time, no lights are on, where I'm at is dark, and I see my dad come from this side, he was escorted by at least three demons, they were all black, I couldn't make any distinctive features out on them at all, they were just black, take my dad out of there. I didn't want my dad to go back there. And I was sitting there trying to ask God, well, can you do this? Can you annihilate him? Can you make him as if he never existed? I mean, can you put him on a, you know, he said he, he couldn't do that. Uh, or he wouldn't do that. But I said, well, can you put him on another planet? Uh, just by himself. I mean, I was sitting there trying to plead with God not to send him back to this place. And, uh, my dad didn't belong to, to God anymore. He didn't belong. He belonged to the devil. And it's, and at the very end of the conversation, at some point, I don't know why my dad said, uh, I'm proud of you. He looked at me and he said that he said, I'm proud of you. And, uh, as soon as he said that, the demons that were standing there, they suddenly reappeared from over here and they grabbed my dad and they began to whip up on him like nobody's business. I mean, they were, they were thrashing him good. I mean, all I could hear was just, they were ripping him apart. It was, it was terrible. And he, I, I, I looked as they were doing it, and but they were moving back out of the, out of the natural eye. So they disappeared, but I could even after they disappeared, I could still hear it a little bit, and uh, they were just, they were hurting him really bad. If you're watching this, it's not too late. Say this prayer now, Father in heaven. Please save my soul by the work of your son Jesus on the cross and show me your pure words in the authorized King James Bible.